G'day there. Today we've been doing a small batch of honey harvest, just four frames. And whilst the last of the honey is filtering, I thought what I'd do is process the wax that we've got from the frames. This is the wax, and along with the wax, when you cut off the capping, you also get a bit of honey. So what I'm gonna do is pop this into the oven, heat that up just enough to melt the wax, and what will happen is the wax will go to the top and we'll be able to separate the wax and the honey. When doing this, it's a really good idea to use a reusable pan like we've got here. And that's because when you finish the activity, you will find a lot of the wax will actually stick to whatever container you use. So either have a pot that you're willing to sacrifice or something disposable like this one here, which of course you can reuse as well. So let's get this in the oven and get it heating up. When you're doing this, you're not trying to cook the wax. So a nice gentle temperature, around 100 degrees should be plenty. That's been in the oven now for about, probably just under 10 minutes. Um, you can see that around the outside it's melted quite well, but around the middle it's still pretty firm. So what you wanna do is give that a bit of a stir if you can, just to kind of distribute the temperature. It's obviously cooler in the middle than it is on the outsides. And that way you don't have to overheat it. Now just keep in mind that whatever you use to do your stirring is also gonna be pretty sacrificial. So you might want to do something like I do here and use a skewer or alternately just have a spoon that you've got dedicated to this activity. Now that I've given that a good stir, let's get the oven back on and just continue heating it up because you can probably see there's a lot of wax in here that hasn't fully melted yet. Let's have another peek. All right, that's looking a lot more melted now. But if we're looking close, we can still see that there's a few little spots where the wax hasn't fully melted. So I'm just going to give that another little stir. There's no specific time for this. It's really just about continuing to melt until all of the wax is fully dissolved. And what you'll find at that stage is you'll start seeing a bit of a separation where the wax will start coming to the surface and the honey will be at a lower level below that. Now you have to excuse the background noise because I'm doing a bit of multitasking and dinner's on the go as well. But uh, I do think it's now time to check our wax again. Um, this time around, it's looking pretty uniform. So let's turn this oven off. You can kind of see that everything's melted in. There is a, a few bits of debris and things like that in there. But on the top of the surface, you can see it's really glossy looking. And that's the melted wax that's sitting on the top. This will start to cool down and solidify and as it solidifies that wax on the top will turn into a bit of a solid layer and then we'll end up with a bit of a layer of debris underneath that and then a bit more honey right at the bottom that we can retrieve. So I'm going to leave this now to set and then we'll come back a bit later when it's set and I'll show you what we do with it then. It's now the next day and you can see here that the wax is firmed up. It's solidified now and that means that we can start the next step. You probably notice that there's a lot of debris in here as you're having a bit of a closer look at the wax and that's perfectly fine because what I was trying to do last night was just separate the layer of this honey from the layer of wax and I didn't want to heat the honey up too much because I actually want to collect this honey and this is still good for eating because it has been heated up it's not going to be classified as a raw honey anymore like the rest of what I've harvested but uh, yeah that's definitely not something to be wasted and you can collect that and I find that's really good in things like my cooking. If you're doing honey soy chickens and stuff like that, this uh, tends to become my cooking honey for those types of recipes. Let's get on to the next step and collect the honey. The first step is to remove the wax. And what you'll find is if you have a container like this where the sides are flexible, you'll be able to break the wax away from the sides of the container and you'll be able to lift it up in pieces. Once I've let the honey drain off for a bit, I'm going to pop these bits of wax into a pot. And this is where I'm going to refine that wax a bit further to get rid of the debris. Now I will say any pot that you use for this activity needs to be a bit of a sacrificial one. And you can probably see this one here has quite a bit of wax on it from times that I've done this in the past. This is definitely not a pot that's ever going to be going back in the kitchen. Now you're probably noticing I'm taking a bit of a while at this stage just to let the honey drip off. And that's because I want to retain as much honey as I can because this is all valuable for eating. 
The dripping slowed right down on this one now as well, so I'm going to pop this one also in the pot. Let's set this wax aside for a moment and we'll get on to jarring up the honey. This one's not a canning recipe, so any clean and dry jar or bottle like I have here today will do for storing your honey. One of the other cool things about using these alfoil type containers is you can actually shape to create a little bit of a mouth to be able to pour. There we go, we're getting right to the end now. And there we go. That's a whole bunch of honey that we've managed to salvage that would have otherwise have been wasted. If you do get a couple of little bits of wax in here, it's really not the end of the world. But if you do want your honey to be perfectly clear, you can of course filter it a little bit further between the separation stage and pouring it into your jar. Now that I've dealt with the honey, let's clean up this wax. And to do that, firstly what I'm gonna do is actually give the wax a bit of a wash. And that's just to get any of the debris off the back and the excess honey that's still stuck on this. I should mention that when I was doing the wash just then, I was using a warm water because that does help with honey to wash it off. Um, and it also does loosen up some of like dead bees and wings and things like that but you don't want it too hot, especially if you're doing this activity in your sink, because the last thing you want is wax going down your sink and then solidifying in your drainage system. So I've now given this all a bit of a wash and you can see all the honey's gone and a lot of the bigger pieces of debris are gone as well. We still have the layer of debris that's stuck to the bottom of the wax and that's okay because we get rid of that in the next stage. I'm now gonna let this wax dry out for a while and that's because in the next stage, I'm actually gonna heat this up and it's not a good idea to have water and wax together when it's hot. That's looking pretty dry on that side, time to flip it over. The wax is now dried off, so I'm going to pop that back into this pot here, which I have also cleaned out and made sure that's nice and dry. And I'm actually gonna break this wax down a little bit in this pot now. And what I'm gonna do in this pot is actually use it for melting down the wax. And that way we can clean it up and get rid of the rest of this debris. Some people do this next step in a double boiler and that's a really good idea if you're using a gas stove because wax is of course flammable. For me, I've got an electric stove here so it's not as big an issue as long as I manage my heat. And what I'm gonna do is just keep a bit of a gentle heat on this pot until all of my wax is melted. And you can probably see there's a last few little bits of wax that haven't melted. So that's where your skewer comes in handy to give this a bit of a stir. That's pretty much melted now. So I'm just gonna let that cool down just a smidge. I don't want it to start solidifying at all. I do need to do the next stage liquid, but I don't want it to be too boiling hot for what I'm gonna do next. Now you may have noticed a couple of extra bits of kit that's been sitting in the background as I've been doing this. And one is this old baby blanket. And this is what I'm going to use. And you can see that I've used it before here with the, uh, the wax on it. Um, I'm gonna use this for filtering. I also have a container and I like to do this in a disposable container. So let's set this up. First of all, I've got my container and then all I'm going to do is use my filtering material and pop that inside just like this and that will allow me to pour the wax in and any of the debris that's left will actually get caught on this material. As I said I'm just using an old baby blanket here today if you don't have something like this a bit of cheesecloth or something like that will do the trick as well. So the next step is going to be pouring our wax in here.
in here, you can see the debris that's been filtered out by the cloth. This will all start to solidify pretty quickly as that wax hardens, but I will leave it just a couple of minutes just to let that wax continue to drip. You can see that dripping there. You can also probably see why the plastic container you use needs to be a fairly rigid plastic. This is warped quite a bit with the heat of that hot wax. This has now stopped dripping, so what I'm going to do is take this material outside and I'm going to give it a bit of a hose down. It's definitely not a good idea to wash this down inside. Again, you don't want the wax getting in your pipes. And what I find is just the cold hose is perfectly fine to get rid of a lot of the debris. Um, as you saw, when I started this exercise, there was wax on it. It just becomes part of the wax for the next time you're doing some processing. So here is my cleaned wax, all nicely filtered. All I need to do now is leave this for a while for it to solidify. And here we have our puck of rendered beeswax. Now the top is beautiful and clear, but I am going to flip over and show you the bottom. And you can see in the bottom here, we do still have a little bit of honey that did manage to get through that last bit of processing. It is all sitting on the bottom. Just give the bottom of this a bit of a wash up. Sometimes if I get a thicker layer, what I'll do is actually get a knife and just cut a little bit off the bottom. Just shave it off until it gets to the nice clean wax. So here we are with our completed puck of beeswax and nearly a litre of honey. And this was off, as I mentioned, four frames. It was just a small harvest and it probably seems like a small amount of beeswax to go to this effort for and a small amount of honey as well. But when you do lots of small harvests, every little bit does build up and every little bit counts. Hopefully you enjoyed joining me today as we were processing our cappings. This is obviously not the only way to go about it. It's just the way that we do it. And hopefully it works for you if you're doing small lots like us. Thanks for joining and catch you later.